Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today, we're going to talk about the normal anatomy of the human eye. But first, just a few things. If you like this video, please click the like button at the base of the screen. Also, this video is meant for medical education purposes only. It is not meant for medical advice. If you have a question, please talk to your doctor. All right, let's get started. Today we're going to talk about the normal anatomy of the eye. So I have an image here, uh, but I just want to get us oriented first. So let's take a look at this image first. So in the pathology department, when we receive an eye, we need to look at it in all aspects, the outside and the inside. So what we do is we take this eye and we cut it into three sections. One section just on one side of the cornea, the other section on the other side of the cornea, uh, and then that makes three relatively equal sections with the center section including both the pupil and the optic nerve, which is at the back of the eye and is not seen in this diagram right here. So the main image that we're showing right here is where we've taken this section, but we haven't quite yet done this section, okay? So we've taken off one section or clot, and we're looking into the eye. So just to get oriented, this clear area marking the outside here is the cornea, which is seen here. Okay. The center of the eye has a, uh, a clear opening through which light travels. This clear opening is uh, bordered by this um, pretty movable structure here called the iris, which can, which can open or close depending on the amount of light that you want to let into the eye. So this structure here is the iris. And this structure right here is the iris, and right here is the iris. So keep in mind when we're looking at this image here that this is a three-dimensional spherical structure. So we're going to see mirror images on the left side and the right side, okay? But it's all the same thing here, okay? All right, so you might notice that there's this big, huge honker <laughs> in the middle of an eye in the middle of this eye, and this is the lens. So the lens in this eye has a yellow discoloration because this is an artifact of formalin fixation. A formalin is similar to formaldehyde, it's a, it's a preservative. So in the eye that has been fixed in formalin, the lens, which is usually optically clear to let the maximum amount of light through, the lens turns a yellow discoloration after it's been fixed. So normally in the normal living eye of you, me, and people walking around, this structure here is very clear, as is the cornea. So the cornea, which is here, is usually a very, very clear structure, but here it's opaque because it's been fixed with this preservative called formalin. Okay, so the eye is divided into three major layers. There's an outer layer, an innermost layer, and then an in-between layer. So the outermost layer of the eye has two major parts. The back part of the eye, which makes up the majority of the eye, is covered by a structure called the sclera, which is the white part of the eye. Okay, so this is a very dense, thick, fibrous layer that adds support to the eye. And the sclera at the region of the limbus, which is a transition point, the sclera will um, transition into the cornea, which is the structure here. Okay, so we have the sclera and the cornea making up the most outer section of the eye. The innermost layer of the eye is this red layer here. This is the retina. The retina is what allows you to see it is the innermost layer of the eye, lining the majority of the, of the um, posterior aspect of the eye, okay? And we will talk about that 
in a little bit more detail in just a little while. The intermediate layer is this area here. It's called the uvea, which includes part of the iris, the ciliary body and the ciliary muscle, and then also the layer in between the sclera and the retina, and that layer is called the choroid. So the choroid, the ciliary body, the ciliary muscle, those all consist of the uvea, which is an umbrella term that includes all of those structures. Okay. So we've talked about our three layers, okay? The outermost, the innermost, and the intermediate layer. And now we can talk about different chambers of the eye and different cavities within the eye. The anterior cavity includes the anterior chamber, which is here. It also includes the posterior chamber, uh, but that's hard to see in this particular eye. The posterior chamber is located between the suspensory ligaments that hold up the lens, which we don't really see that well here, and in between the suspensory ligaments and the iris. So it would be right around here, which we don't really visualize very well here because it's a little bit um, altered because we've cut into it. Okay. The anterior cavity most prominently is made up of the anterior chamber, and that's this space right here. The anterior chamber is lined anteriorly by the cornea, which is here, and it's lined posteriorly by the iris, which is here. Okay, and remembering that this is a three dimensional spherical structure. Okay, so the anterior chamber is this space here. And it is filled with a very liquidy fluid called aqueous humor. And this fluid is very similar to the consistency of water. It's, it's, it's a very, very smooth liquid that can flow easily. And that is in comparison to the vitreous humor, which fills up the majority of the posterior aspect of the eye. And this is the vitreous body. The vitreous humor, and you can see how the light kind of reflects off the vitreous humor. It's a, it's a more viscous fluid. Uh, it's a more viscous liquid that doesn't tend to flow very well. Um, and so it gets, when we cut into the section, the aqueous humor, which is in the anterior portion of the eye, will flow out very easily. But the vitreous humor in the posterior portion of the eye will stay put because it's a much more viscous fluid. So the posterior aspect of the eye is filled with this vitreous body that abuts up against the retina. And so the retina is this red structure. It's red because it's very, very vascular. And it covers the majority of the posterior aspect of the eye. And you can see where the retina comes up anteriorly and it forms this kind of layer, this transition point called the aura serrata. And so we will have another discussion on the retina in greater detail. But for right now, this is your introduction to the normal anatomy of the eye. Join us next time for Adventures in Neuropathology.